Hello everybody, Crit Crab here, and you are about to die of cringe. This story is about a guy who was asked by the local kids to run a game of D&D for them. Now, just in case any DMs like me are watching and getting that giddy, fresh player excitement that comes with introducing someone new to the hobby, remember, this is a Crit Crab video. You know the rules, and so do I. No, these kids are the equivalent of those horny Doge Kid memes. I just want to post a quick trigger warning for those of you who are sensitive to topics involving sexual assault. This one gets really bad. Anyways, sit back, relax, and get your affairs in order because you're going to want an early coffin before we're done. Roll post. So this happened around September of 2020. I was in a new apartment building as a 23 year old and the kids of the building always said hi to me or tried talking to me about stuff. I guess this was because I talked to them like they were intelligent creatures and not babies like the other adults did. Well, eventually one of the kids asked me if I played D&D, and I told him how I DM'd a few games and played during college fairly frequently. He asked me to DM for him and his friends, all 13 or so and all boys, and with their parents' permission I did so in the common area of my floor. Quick aside, their parents didn't require masks, but I wore one, and frankly I should have taken it as a bad omen. Also, I'm going to avoid mentioning all the times I had to explain what to roll and add and just act like they knew for the sake of the story. To start, the table seemed pretty obviously into wanting to hit stuff and less into roleplaying or having a balanced party. So to counteract this, I fudged some numbers and moved some things around item-wise to give them what I thought would be a fair number of healing potions and stuff to avoid needing, quote, boring healers. In the end, the party had one half-orc barbarian, one human fighter, one goliath barbarian, one dragonborn fighter. I had to convince them to not all be barbarians and to take different races to just try and spark creativity. They didn't care too much, luckily. Well, after session zero and explaining the rules and how it'll be a lot of puzzles and even more fighting, we started session one. You will never guess where they started. A tavern. In the tavern, I had placed a bulletin board with a bunch of jobs that they could take depending on what sounded interesting. In reality, it was just a bunch of dungeons that I had saved from other games scaled to their level one characters. First thing they do upon entering said tavern? Investigation check. Awesome. They know how to do things besides fight stuff. Me. Okay, what are you investigating? Orc. I want to see if there are any women here. Me. Uh, okay, yeah. Roll investigation. He rolled a 19. Me. Yes, you see a few women among the men sitting at tables, and you see a small halfling woman carrying mead and ale to the tables. Human. Do they have big boobs? All of them, in some way, repeat the question. Me. Uh, you can't tell for the patrons since they're wearing some form of armor or something covering their chests. Nor can you tell for the barmaid. In reality, I had no idea about breast size, I felt creepy even thinking about saying anything about them, and I wanted to avoid getting bitched at by angry mothers. Orc. Whatever then, can I talk to the halfling? Me. Sure, but why do you want to? The bulletin board is on the wall facing the bar. That's what has your potential quests. Now, I'm sure that was too railroady, but I saw what was coming as I used to be a 13-year-old boy, and I really just wanted to avoid it. I could not. Orc. I want to seduce her. The others, some form of asking to seduce the other women in the tavern. Me. Fine, you can try. How do you each do it? Now, my idea here was simple. They'd have no idea what to do and would drop the attempt. This worked for the Goliath and human. The half-orc and dragonborn didn't back down, unfortunately. I'll start with the dragonborn. Dragonborn. Where are the other women in the tavern? Me. There are three women all sitting at different tables. One tiefling, a human, and a half-orc. They all seem focused on their drinks. Dragonborn. I approach the human. I sit down next to her and say, Me. She immediately interrupts you and asks, Who do you think you are? Dragonborn. Oh, uh, I say, It's okay, relax. I'm just a dragon looking for a princess to guard in my tower. Will you be that princess? 
Now, for the life of me, I have zero idea where he came up with that pickup line. I asked him to roll, and he rolled a five. Me. She looks at you with a combination of confusion and anger. If you don't move your scaly ass away from me, I will turn your skin into my newest set of armor. Dragonborn. Ah, uh, that's dumb. Can't I get another chance? Me. Not unless you want to fight her. Dragonborn. Can I try with another girl? Me. After the orc. Okay, orc, what's your move here? Orc. I want to go up to the bar and ask the barmaid to share a drink with me. Me. Fine. She responds with, I'm flattered, but you're not quite my type. You're a little bit... green. I then had to explain that green means new and that it was a joke about him being a rookie and an orc. A great joke ruined by young people. Orc. Oh, come on. I bet I can show you I'm exactly your type. Now, I want to roll to seduce. Me. Fine. Roll. At this point, he rolled and quickly picked up his die after doing so, saying that he rolled a nat 20. I said that since I didn't see the roll, I couldn't believe it. I asked him to roll again and allow me to see the roll. This caused a brief argument about fairness and resulted in me saying that a roll would be counted as a nat 1 if picked up before I had a chance to see it. So he unhappily agrees and rolls a 15 with modifiers. Not bad. Me. She smiles at you, but says, My type isn't you, sweetie. It's standing behind the bar pouring the drinks, as she flashes you the ring on her finger. Orc. Fine, then I want to grab her and pull her into me. I want to ask for a kiss. The others, some form of asking to do so with the other women. The dragonborn requested the human specifically. Me. Listen. I like RP, but you guys are asking to be pretty creepy right now. I don't want to fully stop you from RPing, but I'm warning you this will not end well. Human. No, this is a good idea. My dad says that women like a man who doesn't take no for an answer. I want to go for the tiefling and ask her to join me for the night. Me. Rolls an attack. She slaps you for two points of damage. Orc. What about mine when I ask her for a kiss? Me. Make a strength check. He does and rolls an 18. He won and actually held on to her. Me. She struggles and tries to get away, asking you to let her go as her husband yells at you asking you what you are doing. You other two roll me checks as well. The other two fail and get pushed or slapped, so the only one who still has their woman is the orc with the halfling. Me. The tavern is realizing that you all are causing problems and start yelling at you to stop and get out. The halfling is still struggling against your grip and is yelling at you to drop her. Personally, guys, I suggest you apologize and regroup. This isn't looking good. Orc. No, it's fine. Me. Screaming internally. Orc. I say, fine, we're leaving, and try to run out of the tavern with the halfling in my grip. Me. What? Why? That's kidnapping. That's not a good idea, dude. Human. She'll be like a pet. We can use her. He said use in a way that very clearly indicated sex, or I guess rape since he clearly didn't want this at all. Goliath. Yeah, she'll learn to like us. We'll show her what people who insult us get. Me. Sighs. Jesus. Fine. You stand up and attempt to run out the tavern with the halfling screaming. As you do, a number of patrons stand up and stand in front of the door blocking it and calling for guards. Orc. I yell at them to back away as I draw my axe. I ask him to roll for intimidation, and he fails. Me. They don't back down. Human. Oh, fuck. Human. Can I rip her shirt off? Me? What? No, the orc has her. You can't get to her. Orc. Fine, then I'll do it. Me. No, I won't allow that. You're holding a halfling with a room full of gruff adventuring types and guards on the way. Stop the kidnapping and try to work things out. I promise it won't go well any other way. Orc. No, I turn around to run into a back room somewhere. I want to make her mine. What the fuck? The others actually agree and start saying how four on one they should win easily. But fine, play with fire, get burned. Me. Fine. As you turn to find a back room, five town guards rush in and tell you to stop immediately. Pick your next move wisely. Dragonborn. I'ma hit him with fire breath to kill them while we run to the back room. Me. 
Okay, I'll give you that one first. Everyone roll for initiative. Dragonborn. Wait, won't my breath kill everyone? It's fire. Me. Nope, it goes 2d6 damage if they fail their saving throw. And I'll tell you right now, that's not going to kill anyone here. Dragonborn. Well, I use it anyway, let's go! So at this point, it's 4 versus 13. And the guards are 3rd level, while the patrons range from 3rd to 5th. The fire attack hits 6 people, 4 of whom roll successfully, so 2 people take 7 damage, and the other 4 takes 4. In terms of initiative, the party came in 5th, 8th, 10th, and 11th. The party quickly realized how fucked they are. What followed was a metric ton of BS. The arguments ranged from how normal women wouldn't scream when grabbed, to how they should have been able to seduce her with no problem, to the fact that women want this. I was having none of it at this point. We weren't 20 minutes in, and I already had a party full of those guys at my table. Quickly, they all went down. I don't remember exactly, since I rolled like I had weighted dice, but I'm pretty sure we didn't get through one full round of combat before they were all down. They were freaking out. Besides a myriad of sexist shit like before, now they were bitching about how this wasn't the game they wanted to play and that I didn't know what I was doing or how women worked in fantasy. I didn't say anything beyond the fact that the way they acted was wrong, that they needed to learn how to properly act not only in D&D, but in life in general. I know D&D isn't real life, but the way their arguments went about real life women to try and translate to fantasy women, they needed to learn a lot. I shut down the party that night, until they matured enough to understand what they did was wrong, I would not DM for them again, especially considering that they didn't want to do anything that they said they actually wanted to do." End post. That was horrible. I know everything is clearer in the rearview mirror, but if I were to run that game, I would immediately get uncomfortable and shut down the game as soon as it became clear that they wanted to do more than casually flirt with the NPCs. Of course, I don't mean to say that OP was in any way in the wrong, but I do feel as this was a very clear out-of-game problem, it should have been handled out-of-game. But of course, it was shut down before the worst happened, and I'm sure even if the players won the combat, OP would not have let the players have their way. And obviously, as I say in nearly every video, this problem could have been solved in a session zero where it would be communicated what is and isn't okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. Anyone in their right mind would call their parents and let them know how insane their kids were acting. I dug into the comments section and found exactly that. Roll comments. If it were me, I would call all of their parents and explain what they're saying after I punish them for trying to rape NPCs. To which OP responded, I texted or left a letter to the parents asking them to call me when they could. I told them what happened, let them know that D&D was no longer happening, and let them handle it. I haven't heard from the kids though. To which another commenter responded, I'm curious, how did that go over? OP finally responded, well, I spoke to two moms, a stepdad, and an aunt, who a kid was living with because of problem parents. The parents weren't really upset about the boobs part, they had a very boys will be boys attitude. The aunt who was watching her nephew got a bit upset though. When I brought up the sexual assault or grabbing part, it was basically deferring levels of seeming to be upset at their kids. Dad wasn't too bothered since, quote, it's a game. Moms were both kind of upset, but more upset at me for having the ability to do that in a game, even though I explained D&D was just a game where you could do literally anything, it's just up to the kids. And the aunt nearly hung up the phone because she got pissed. When I finally brought up the rape attempt, the dad again stuck to, it's a game, even after I explained the kind of stuff the kids said. He really didn't seem bothered by it, even though it was his stepkid that attempted the rape. The two moms were both different levels of mad. One was pissed that this was allowed and screamed at me for exposing her child to it, then denied her child would say any of the things he said. The other was also mad at me for letting it happen, but kind of forgot about it after I told her what her kids said. She didn't believe me at first, but after explaining that the others did the same, she understood what happened and thanked me for telling her. The aunt, though, was pissed. I didn't need to say much beyond, they tried to force themselves on a girl together before she just said that he was going to need to be taught how to treat women 
in a very low, very I'm holding back my anger voice. So I'm half convinced that kid got beat. But I never saw the kids with bruises or anything, so either they know where they beat kids to hide the bruises, or they didn't get beat and I hope it's the latter. I'm glad that OP contacted the kid's parents about it. It wasn't his job, but it was the right thing to do. I know this is going to be a huge nitpick, but the most annoying character of the bunch to me is likely the Karen that didn't believe OP. It really feels to me that Karens like this one feel a need to protect their children from ever being perceived as wrong in a conceited bid to protect their self-image. But something interesting I've noticed is that the mask drops when the Karen is alone with the child, and suddenly the turns table and the child is now the source of all the world's problems. I guess what I'm trying to say is, Karens aren't just annoying, they're also crappy narcissistic people. I would go on a longer rant about her, but I'm sure she's already hit the front page of r slash entitled parents like five times this week, so I'm just gonna leave her alone. Moving on, the other parent of the bunch that really annoyed me was the dad. Frankly, if I were to take a wild guess, he was probably not that involved in his kid's life and does not want to be. All in all, people who watch my channel know that I like giving kids a pass whenever they mess stuff up, as they are still learning and whatnot, and don't get me wrong, I was an annoying kid when I was 13, and I'll admit that. But even then, I was never into the idea of sexual assault. It's just not something that ever made my to-do list, I guess. So while the kids are 13 years old, that's definitely old enough to know what's right and wrong, and for that reason I'm absolutely not into making any excuses for them. It needs to be made abundantly clear to those kids that this kind of behavior is absolutely not okay ever for any reason. This is not the kind of thing you cut your kids some slack on. Though I will admit, I do feel kind of bad for them. It does look like most of the kids featured come from broken homes and are acting out in bad ways. Again, in no way am I trying to excuse or justify any behavior. The whole situation just kind of sucks from this viewpoint. Anyways, before I leave this video, I just want to thank all of you for watching. I've been very sick on and off since late last year, and all of your support has really been carrying me through. I know I've not been uploading as much as I can, and while I am working on getting to a place where I can upload more frequently, you can catch more crab on Twitch, second channel, TikTok, Twitter, and Discord. I'll link all of them in the description. Anyways, all that aside, if you like this video, please do leave me a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories just like this one. Till next time.